The original Generation 1 Pokemon games had 15 different Pokemon types to choose from. We were happy and content, but eagerly waiting for the reveal of the much hinted at Generation 2 Pokemon. But we never expected that there would be new types that would be added to the Pokemon universe as well. All of a sudden we had these new cool black Pokemon and some awesome colored Pokemon cards. What was this new type? How did it work? How would it change the world of Pokemon? Today we look at the history of the Dark type. The Dark type was first introduced in the Generation 2 games Gold and Silver in October 2000, and two months later in the Pokemon card game. Gold and Silver brought us the first ever pure Dark type and the only one from that generation, Umbreon. It was the perfect Pokemon to introduce the type with, since its primary color was black and its glowing circular patterns gave it a mysterious aura. Five other Pokemon were introduced that had half Dark type. Murkrow, Sneasel, Houndor, Houndoom, and Tyranitar. The Dark-type Pokemon were an immediate hit with the fans, and Umbreon and Tyranitar continue to be two of the most popular Pokemon to this day. The new type also saw a change in the move Bite, which was a normal type attack in Generation 1, and became a Dark type attack in Generation 2. Unlike most Pokemon types that we see added to the game, no Generation 1 Pokemon were changed to Dark type with the release of Generation 2. Another interesting fact is that the Dark type was the only one not to gain a type boost from a badge in Generation 2 games. The Dark type also helped balance out the extremely powerful Psychic type from Generation 1. With Ghost type moves not being super effective against Psychics in Generation 1, adding the Dark type gave players a lot more Pokemon to choose from when taking down Psychic opponents. When it came to the card game, the Dark type made a huge impact on fans immediately. The Dark Black cards really stood out amongst the other types of cards with their look. The first set to debut the Dark type was the Neo Genesis set, and it only contained two Dark type cards, being Sneasel and Murkrow, which made them even more desirable. There were no holographic Dark type cards with this set, which was kinda odd, but at least Sneasel and Murkrow were both rares. I was actually lucky enough to pull a Sneasel out of my first pack of Neo Genesis cards, and was blown away with how cool it looked. The one disappointing thing, however, was that the most popular new Dark-type Pokémon were not included in this set, like Umbreon, Houndoom, and Tyranitar. They wouldn't be included until the next expansion, Neo Discovery. The thing that most people don't remember about when the Dark-type first came out was that the Dark-type Energy card was a rare card and not a basic energy. There were no basic Dark Energy in Neo Genesis, so if you wanted to use your Sneasel or Murkrow in a deck, you had to first get your hands on the special Dark Energy cards that were by no means common and could be pretty expensive if bought by themselves. In the anime, it took quite a while for the first Dark-type Pokémon to make an appearance. It wasn't until episode 150, Hour of Houndour, that Houndour itself made the first ever Dark-type Pokémon appearance. Gary would go on to evolve its Eevee into an Umbreon later in the series, which became one of his staple Pokémon and boosted its popularity even more. We finally got our first ever Dark-type Legendary Pokémon with the reveal of Darkrai in Generation 4, which became one of the most interesting Legendary Pokémon to this day. The first Dark-type starter Pokémon didn't become available until Greninja in Generation 6, who also went on to become a playable character in two Smash Bros. games. It was good to finally see a Dark-type Pokémon that you could use from early on in the game and play with throughout. So that was a quick run-through of the history of the Dark-type and all aspects of the Pokémon universe. Such a cool typing really changed the game forever, and brought us a ton of cool and unique Pokemon who will remain fan favorites for years to come. Thanks for watching today's episode. If you liked the video, go ahead and hit that like button, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button on the way out, and we'll see you next time.